What's up YouTube? We are on version 11.4.2 and we're heading home. Uh, as far as um, new updates, we're about two or three updates since my last video, I believe. Um, 10.36 was awesome, uh, but it was a little, um, as you can see the car gets a little weird there. It wants to go into the other lane, which is strange that it wants, doesn't know if it wants to make a left or a right. So it gets a little wacky. Um, now I can record a clip. Uh, you see it's a uh, car wants to make a left instead of right. Don't know why. So we'll re-engage once the light goes green. Uh, this turn has been a problem for 11.42 for some reason. 11.3.6, the version I just came off of, that version was handling it perfectly well. Uh, it was always making the right. It didn't really want to go left. All versions before that wanted to make a left and do what this version is doing. So, all right, we're just going to go and we'll figure it out from there. Doesn't want to engage just yet. There we go. All right. So, we are heading home. We've got our first interchange. This is a rather easy commute for me. Uh, I rarely have to do much on my commute it actually works pretty well for me there's like on the way home there's one intersection no two intersections that i have to interact with the vehicle two it's in an hour of driving so essentially i it drives about 59 minutes and i have to interact with the vehicle for about one um, so i essentially am not driving at all as you can see my hands are close by the wheel They'll be on the wheel at times. I'm going to cancel that lane change. I don't like that it makes that lane change. It wants to do it there. I understand why, but I don't like it. I like to be in this lane because I just don't like people, you know, they get flustered if you're not going fast enough in the left lane. So I like to stay in the right lane. Um, they haven't introduced the setting again. There used to be a setting on autopilot where you could just stay in the right lane. And I wish that setting would come back up or move out of right lane or, or favor right lane like a there's a chill but it doesn't do that uh here's our first on highway merge you can see braking coming into the turn but now we're good blinker should come on blinker comes on changing lanes away from merge and it did it well before the ends so i see a lot of people saying this is not happening for them so i don't know why it's happening for me uh and it does it pretty well i'm gonna have to up the speed now now as you see a as we get closer to autonomy, I assume, you know, all these inputs I am doing will, the car or the map or the system will know, hey, usually he picks it up to 64 around here. But the speed limit is 50. So technically the car, you know, 55, 58, uh, it's not going to speed as you would speed. It's just not. So if you're in this to speed, you got to drive yourself. This is not what this is for. Um, I, like I said, the closer you leave it to that speed limit, the better this car will behave. The more the times I see it act a little weird is when I go over and uh, it gets a little wacky. Um, so here you see, I'm not doing anything. We are coming to a stop and uh, for traffic, obviously. It may want to make a lane change here. The left lane is clear. There are people coming at a little bit of a rate of speed. Here comes a guy jumping the lane, so it will probably stay put, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Right now, we are in average setting. I should probably switch out of whatever. Not that it matters, <laughs> but um, this is, yeah, it's doing all the driving. I'm not doing anything. This is the visualizations you see, so you can see it's got the line markers. It's showing the other vehicles. It's telling you this blue line is telling you what the car plans to do. So if you watch that blue line um, at intervals, you can understand what the car is doing. If you see arrows pointing towards the car, it is slowing down. If you see arrows pointing away, it is speeding up. And here we go. It, it is making its lane change on its own now. There is no user input needed whatsoever. That's a change from previous versions that I've reviewed. Now we are on full, full self-drive on the highway. So this is the full stack running on the highway, as well as the city streets. And um, lane changes no longer have a confirmation. 
it makes its own lane changes. Uh, it changes lanes there every day, saying moving away, moving to the other lane to stay on course, on navigation. Hey, look, it's Buzz and Woody. <laughs> Buzz and Woody are hanging off the car. <laughs> I love that. I don't. Know, I hope everybody saw that. He's got Buzz and Woody, Woody hanging off his car. <laughs> that was pretty funny. So, um, yeah, the car is pretty much doing it all itself. Like I said, I drive for about an hour. I do scroll wheels, you know, here and there. Like now, we're at 60. I will bump that up to 65 uh, in this spot, especially being in the left lane. Like I said, I don't like to be in the left lane. That's a pretty nice looking Porsche. If only it were electric. Um, <clears throat> I can't stress enough if you have an hour commute like this takes the weight off your shoulders um, even autopilot takes the weight off your shoulders it changed me as a driver like I said maybe it's because I've got old you know I don't like to say I got old but I got old um, but I, I'm just not I'm just not you know running around like a maniac anymore I have no reason to you can see there it asked me to apply pressure to make sure I'm still awake and my hands are close to the wheel and I'm paying attention Another Model 3 driver. Hello, Mr. Model 3 driver. How you doing? Give him a little wave. You should always wave to the Teslas. I still believe in that. Um, and we are moving. Uh, here we come to our first kind of wonky turn. Um, this car handles this thing beautifully. Uh, it ever it had, We used to go through here with some construction for a while, and it just it's beautiful through here. It really, even in the right lane, at speed, it doesn't get close to the wall and I'm kind of comfortable with letting it uh, go through there now I know that in the past sometimes I used to disengage there especially with the construction cones I know we had some troubles but it has been perfect again ply force the wheel blinking blue means hey you better fucking pay attention well I'm, I'm not gonna pay attention I'm gonna just ignore it right let's see what happens let's see what happens it's getting getting harder oh now it's yelling at me okay so it starts beeping at you so if you're not paying attention, it's going to yell at you. As well as, if I look away from the screen, and you can see if I look down at my, say I'm looking down here, see if we can get the alert to come on. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But if you do an extended period of looking at the screen, it will yell at you to keep your eyes on the road. Um, it's not right now, don't know why, but it will. So there are safety parameters. Um, I know some people, you know, do some other nefarious stuff, as people will do, to uh, get the car to drive without them paying attention. Um, I don't know why you'd have to right now. The car is doing pretty well on its own, um, and doing that really isn't too much of an ask. Or just keep your hand like this, and it'll feel the weight. So, I don't know. Some people, you know, people are people. You can see we're coming through these S-curves, and now this car, um, the previous version, would have a lot of braking through these uh, S-curves, a decent amount, and 11.4.2 uh, has uh, very much smoothed out that braking, and the turning, I must say. I have um, a few areas of sharp turns, um, a little, you know, uh, areas where, you know, sharp turns and, and off grading and stuff and turning has been rather excellent with this version that I've seen so far as far as the lane and not moving over too far to the right or and giving room for the car next to you and it's been very very perceptive of distances away from other vehicles I noticed too the one thing I don't like is if say that black Audi uh, after the white car passed drifted into our lane the car will break real heavy real heavy now, I understand why. I mean, if he drifts into our lane, you know, obviously. But sometimes there's enough room to skirt over a little bit. And, and you'll see it if someone does it while I'm next to them. Like, because that happens too. You know, if there's a car next to you and he slides over a little, it'll slide over with him. But if he does it in front of that bumper, the car jams the brakes pretty hard. Um, I mean, it's not start, you know, it's not enough to go nuts about, but it does break. And people talk about phantom braking, but sometimes I think that's what they're not seeing. I'm not saying phantom braking doesn't exist, because it exists, and I've been through it. 
I've owned this car since 2019. It's got 92,000 miles on it. So I understand phantom braking and it had, when I first got this car, it happened a lot. Um, it hasn't happened in a long time for me. I haven't done a, a, a considerable road trip, whereas, you know, I'm just pretty much commuting with it. So, I mean, I haven't seen it in a while. So I keep saying that phantom braking is a cause of something around you that you're not seeing. And I could be wrong that it's for all cases, but for most cases. So hopefully we'll come across some of that today uh, on my rather boring commute. I mean, not much is happening. It's the highway. Not much is supposed to happen. You're just supposed to cruise along in the flow of traffic. And you can see that the Tesla is handling this well. I am still not touching the wheel. I have not touched the wheel since I got on the highway. I, I mean, I've touched it to tell it I'm here, but I'm not touching the wheel. I, I, I have, you know, a hand nearby. I'm observant of traffic and what's going on, and I'm ready to take over if I have to. My feet are ready, positioned over the pedal if they need to be, brake and or accelerator. So I'm ready to go. It's pretty basic, it's pretty easy, and, um, it's getting darn good so i don't know where this goes from here um i know again elon said don't quote him but he said they hope to have it done by the end of the year and done to me by the end of the year means i won't have to do anything during this commute and people don't realize oh see 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 he came into our lane i hope you guys saw that he infringed on that white line the car braked it moved over this time too because he was real close to me Stay in your lane there, guy. Um, but that you saw that right there, so that's good. We're going to have to snipper clip that. Um, she's been working, like I said, really good. It, and it was perfect. That was perfect, too. That wasn't even a lot of break. Um, okay, next uh, point here, I'm going to get ready just in case. But this uh, curve has been a problem in the past. Now, when I leave it set at 65, I don't know why it alerted me. When I leave it set at 65, it will, sometimes it has barreled into this turn. It's never hit anything, but it's gotten close to this yellow line in this um, curb here. Now, you can see the lead car is going slower, so I don't think we have that issue today. But, uh... But it looks like uh, it has been in this past update much, much better. Um, it's been slow, really, it, it, it's been gradual slowing instead of a little bit of a hard slow that it used to do. And it also has been um, um, staying a little more to the line, I guess, if you want to say that. It's been, you know, hugging the other side of the road so to speak when uh oh model y um so it's been pretty good and i went uh, actually just got done with my four-year uh service visit my four-year you know maintenance if you want to call it that which is grease the brakes you know do a rotation you know whatever uh, change the air filter and um i i gotta say i saw a lot of people picking up cars in mount kisco a lot of people it's getting close to end of quarter it's not quite end of quarter. Um, you know, there had to be about, you know, when I was there for the hour and a half I waited, uh, at least uh, 10, 15, maybe more people picking up their cars and they were coming in and going as like they came in, they put more cars out. So at least we're pretty hopeful about end of quarter. Um, I, I usually you see a lot of activity and I'm pretty sure that was just a brand new one that just pulled on there. Actually, no, maybe not. It had tags on it. Tags would be on the new cars. would be the paper plate. But, uh, I mean, I know. There's some, you know, stuff on the line that says that... You can see that was a lane change I initiated by hitting the blinker stock to move over to the right lane. And I'm going to slow down a hair here. This turn has been another one of those turns where it has a tendency in the past to do a little something. But again, if I had left this set at 60 for my whole commute, I don't got a problem at all. Now look, we're going to go in here and we get a little hard break. You see that? Hard break. Not a phantom break. That's a hard break to stay in its lane. Okay. Now, some people may say it's phantom. 
it is excessive and it did it after the turn which is wild when you think about it because you know it should be doing it in the middle of the turn and not like hard like that but a little more subtle and then powering out but um they smoothed out the first one I, I was hoping they'd smooth out this one too and this one has been pretty smooth in that outside lane but the inside lane uh the, the right lane that was a little a little uh that was slowed down a little too much there was nobody behind me i got my eye on the rear view mirror um, i'm always watching that constantly so if there's nobody behind me i'll let it slow down a little see what happens how low it will go there it went down to about 44 and a 60 on a road you should be doing 55 generally debatable had the car been doing 50 55 and i dropped that speed the, the, if i had dropped that speed to 60 that wouldn't happen um and in the past it hasn't happened because the car doesn't i think it's braking because it's moving close to the white and it says don't cross the white brake and it brakes excessively it needs to learn how to judge that and I don't know why it, it's not just like a little more wheel, you know, versus braking like that, especially on the highway. But again, this we are literally in the infancy stage of the highway stack. So when you're talking about the highway stack, you know, it, it, it has, it's going to mature. Um, it's only been a month or two, I think, right? 11.3 was, or was it version 11? I didn't get it till 11.3, but it, it, it has been very, very recent that um, the highway stack came on. It hasn't been that long. So, uh, you know, it, it was running in shadow mode on other car, on all the cars, but um, just recently it got turned on for testers. I want to say maybe as, as far as a couple months ago, but I think it might have been a little more than that. Another Tesla. So, three we've seen so far today. Three, three, I think, three or four. They are really becoming coming everywhere. All right, so we are moving. We have now merged onto 684. You see a break. This guy is on the side of the road. Good job, car. Good job. Okay, so, ooh, that guy behind me almost clipped him. Um, so we are good. You know, it. I'd say that's a correct action. Um, if somebody hits you there behind you, if they tap, you know, if they were to, to rearrange you, that's their fault. It's their problem it's not your fault if you break for a disabled vehicle on the side of the road and slow down a little bit i mean that's not it that's not your fault you're doing the right thing and it did the right thing there it slowed down it judged it came out you saw it it slowed down it judged what was going on saw no problems slid over to the left of hair and then kept going now again we're changing changing lanes stay out of the right most lane i don't understand why can't I just stay in the rightmost lane? I like the rightmost lane. That's where I'm more comfortable. I don't know why it changes. I don't know what that point of that is. I get it. There's on ramps and off ramps. Maybe it's saying, well, if I move over to the middle lane, there'll be less people coming in, less things to deal with. And I think that may be why on this three lane highway, I'm, it constantly wants to be in the right lane or in the middle lane. Sorry. Um, but I like the right lane. Nobody bothers me in the right lane. I stay there, and if it would just go around the slower cars, I'd be perfectly fine. Um, hopefully, that'll come back with a, a, a setting to uh, stay in the rightmost lane, at least for now, until we get to the point where you don't even have to think about it. Here comes uh, uh, Dudley Do Right. Here comes Crazy Man with number one. There you go. Get that plate. Freaking got to do 90 miles an hour down the highway in the right lane, swerving around. To get out of get out of the way to you know to get past people because I don't know who's going too slow here for them at 71 miles an hour. Uh, Mercedes Benz dealership on the right. I've been dying to get a picture of this Mercedes Benz dealership um, for the past couple weeks, and I have a few, but they're kind of blurry. But um, they had a Model Y out front, like sitting out front, like displayed right in front of the the building for months, and I cannot figure out why or what was going on. There was just one Model Y sitting there. I don't know if somebody that owned, if the owner drives it. I, I don't know what it was doing there. I, I was very curious. I found it funny that they put it outside um, like that, like kind of prominently displayed. Um, it's, you don't, I, I don't know. I guess I think in the old way 
where you would show your competitors vehicles out in front of your building maybe i think of it wrong but or they were just trying to attract some people in thinking oh it's a they sell teslas there i don't know i couldn't figure it out well this is uh no see get the the wheel neck pay attention got a model y behind me a white one that might be the same one we saw on uh the sawmill uh, yeah i mean so far here comes another guy yeah look at this guy and yeah, i wonder why your car looks like that freaking idiots i don't know i don't i just don't get it they swear they fly around like they're in the you know what what is the point of that riding up on that guy's ass and swerving over like a maniac god forbid you know i don't know i just don't see it i don't see the the, the uh, reason for any of that especially not on saturday traffic he's not driving that is a brand new Y. That is a brand new Model Y. No plates. He's got the uh, piece of paper in the door, in the window. So there you go. Brand new Model Y. One sold this quarter. <laughs> Another happy customer. And I'm sure he'll be thrilled because these cars are awesome. I was, uh, you know, doing up my calculations the other day, trying to put everything together. I haven't finalized the number yet. But I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that I have um, saved $15,000 in fuel over the 92,000 miles. 92,000 miles, figure I was getting 20 miles a gallon. Gas price around here, I'm saying at $4. That's kind of an average. It went up to 5 for a little while, went up to 550 for a little while, went down to 350 for a little while. So. I was kind of using four as my average, and uh, I think I'm coming in at $15,000 versus what it would have been a 20 mile per gallon car, which is what I used to own. Um, so if you're in the market to buy and they are on sale right now, or they're, they're a little cheaper than normal uh, with the $7,500 tax credit, and then Connecticut State will give you $2,000 for the base model, or New York State will give you $2,000 for the base model. I mean, you could really walk out of a dealership uh, or out of a Tesla uh, order online. You don't even have to go into a dealership. But you could walk out for um, uh, under $28,000 right now for this exact car. Uh, you can see the blinker came on. There is a car there. You can see they're fine behind me in the camera. So um, so for 20, uh, 28, I think it is about um, 30, whatever. I paid 35 after all those incentives I got. It was 42 minus the 7,500 minus the two grand. I paid 35. I've saved 15,000 in gas. So take that off. And I've paid $20,000 for this car. Uh, my Had I just bought another car with 20, had I bought another car at the same cost, $35,000, that got 20 miles per gallon. Um, Probably I would not have got a 20 mile per gallon car uh, if I was buying brand new like I did with this. You know, I probably would have been looking a little more fuel conscious. Um, I mean, if you say I would have got a 40 mile per hour car, you could half it and say I would have only saved $7,500, which would still put this car at uh, 32 minus 75. It'd still be around $25,000. Um, and that's now. I mean, I'm hoping to go another at least eight years with this car hopefully if it if it does me well so if i could go another eight years with this car and you want to figure best case scenario that would be another thirty thousand dollars in savings that would mean i would not have spent a dime on this car this car would have saved me money had i bought another car that got 20 miles per gallon and drove that to work for 12 years i would have spent thirty thousand dollars more than I spent on this, than, than to fuel that car versus what it cost me to fuel this car. That's that's what I'm talking about here. Literally, right now, if I had a 20 mile per gallon car, four dollars a gallon, uh, I drive 100 miles, 45 each way. Um, it would cost me 20 dollars to get to work, right? It would cost me five gallons, 100 miles. This car to charge at my house in Connecticut where the electricity rates are the highest, cost me $4.79. 
a day for 100 miles. Uh, if I had to stop at the supercharger, it would be a little more. They charge almost double what I pay at all. Well, maybe not double. Eh, close. A little less than double. So, even supercharging, there is savings. It's just not as much. And the further you drive, the further you commute, the more savings there is. Um, and as far as maintenance goes, uh, we're at 92, 92,000 miles. I've had two uh, sets of tires. I've managed to get 40 out of each set-ish, 40,000 each, which is good for a Tesla because everybody else seems to go through them faster. Uh, I did an upper control arm out of warranty. The upper control arms are a known issue. There's a service bulletin, so there was a part revision. So they did that free of labor. Even with labor, it was $385, but without labor, it was $180. I went through an erratic car wash, which had a undercar wash. It was one of those touchless ones where the thing moves around you, but it was, um, uh, it had spray jets up the bottom. And for some how I managed to get water up into the um, front controller and the front controller, the front low voltage controller shorted out. That I consider my fault. I shouldn't have been going through something with a giant underwater body camera. Also, the seal on the hole maybe could have been a little better. I don't know. <coughs> but it happened. I consider that my stupidity. Either way, that fiasco cost me $700. So they changed the entire front controller, diagnosed labor and materials for $700, okay? You couldn't get a muffler system for $700. Now, that's the entirety of everything. Look, you can see here, you see this? It's slowing down for that car. It's slowing down because it knows it has to merge. We are slowing down preemptively for this merge and then it's pulling in. It is pacing him. Now I'm gonna slow it down myself because it's going a little fast here. But you saw that. That was the conscious thought decision of where it was going to zipper merge. And it does that on a daily basis. It used to be real aggressive, and there probably are a couple videos where you could see it really hitting the brakes and kind of stopping to hold its place in line. Now it's gotten much smarter. It finds its place. If it knows it's not going to make it, it moves up a little. It's very, very, it's getting very good at zipper merging. There you see a guy pulling out with kind of no care. I mean, I could say no care. This is a hard uh, road to pull out on. You got to take a chance when you get it. But, um, what was I talking about? Oh my gosh, I'm talking so much, I don't even know what I'm talking about. So, uh, oh, you know, let's take the, uh, let's take the, let's take the fun way home. Let's take the fun way home. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, so that's it for maintenance. I mean, it really hasn't been any maintenance. There's no oil changes. There's no transmission. Uh, fluids or any of that uh, no transmission itself uh, no oils I went to the dealership and every year they lube the brakes because we're in a salt climate and I asked them I said uh, um, um, how how do the pads look and they said I have uh, out of 10 you know 10 being a full new pad I have seven left I have I have 70 percent of the pads left from the original pads at 92,000 miles. Now you can see we're um, moving over to make this right. We've got a red. These people have the right. So hopefully, let's see how it goes. Oh, oh, yeah, we should wait. We should wait. He's not moving fast enough. Now we can go. Whoa! <laughs> she went a little fast there, but that was pretty good. I, I don't, I don't know why it moves a little bit like that. Like when it's when it's waiting it should just wait its turn i think moving a little bit maybe with the people behind you then they move and it, it chances a rear end um but it did it did very well there i don't know why it juiced it so much usually it doesn't give it that much uh, throttle um but yeah so no maintenance there's zero maintenance now you can see i've made it entirely uh i've made it 28 miles so far i've had to drive the car once on that first turn Everything else has been done on its own. Everything else has been done on its own. I flicked the wheel a little bit. I did a little bit of, uh, you know, this and that. As a matter of fact, speaking of flicking wheel, I'm going to take it down a hair. I like to go about um, eight miles over, typically. 
<clears throat> and uh, I like to keep that setting. Um, and eight miles over seems pretty good to where, hey, Model S. Um, oh, brand new Model S. That's a good sign, too. So, uh, yeah, there's no maintenance, man. There's nothing. The cost to own this vehicle is, is very minuscule so far. I mean, barring catastrophic events, barring, you know, hopefully, and they say, I mean, they say, I don't know who they are, but if something's going to happen in a Tesla, it's going to happen soon. It's going to happen early. And so you'll you'll get it under warranty, and hopefully, like at least the Model S, the OGs that have you know two three hundred thousand miles on some of these cars. Um, I mean, I've seen a lot of battery pack um, talk, and I mean, I'm holding up good, man. I got I got ten percent of a drop on here. It hasn't moved much this year. It moved a lot the first three years, first two years more than anything, and uh, it's been holding up real well. She's been doing really good. Uh, you know, I've been making it home with 50%. Uh, today, it's going to be a little less because I got the AC on. Look, most times I open the window. Uh, going through the turn, you can see she's favoring the white line. She's doing it when the cars are coming. I mean, it, it, it's so good that it's almost scary. Again, I, I can't stress enough. I haven't done anything yet. I haven't drove this car. I haven't pressed an accelerator. I haven't pressed a brake. I haven't turn the wheel I've just told that I was here and I'm watching and being cognizant of what it's doing I've got a jerk behind me who's up my ass right now because we live in an area or I should say general population maybe and may not be specific to my area but my area is known for people who can't just relax just relax chill out why do we got to be doing 100 miles an hour all the time I just don't get it He's behind me. He's got a, 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 a handicap sticker in his window. I can see the handicap sticker because he's so close. And he's flying like a maniac and riding my bumper. Like, what are you doing? Where are you going? Not to run a marathon, you're handicapped. Right? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. You can see here, we hit those couple S turns. It's been beautiful. It's been beautiful. My hands are not on the wheel. It's been beautiful. Um, so, you know, I don't know how to say it. We're coming up on a problem turn, so I'm going to low, low scroll right wheel down a little bit. The guy behind me is not going to be happy, but I'm going to slow it down for this turn just because I know that this could be a problem here. It, if I barrel into that turn at 50 miles an hour, it'll jam on the brakes in the middle of that turn. I know that because I drive it every day. Well, this way I only take... Uh, for this particular reason or for um, for uh, uh, you know traffic or other reasons but anyway uh, so you could see it and it's doing all this by itself it's slowing down it's doing its own thing uh, that turn back there I have the this not this version but well, maybe it was this version this version and the past version have been pretty good through there actually where it doesn't cross the yellow and it doesn't slam on the brakes in the turn it kind of breaks a little bit before <coughs> which is the way it's supposed to be done and, and it's learning you can see it learning um this switchback sometimes gets a little weird it'll break a little more than it needs to on the switchback uh you see it there we are still perfect see it goes a little excessive braking right there at the middle of the switchback and i've noticed that on all switchbacks i'm going to say switchback right to left you know right sharp into a left sharp um i don't know why i mean i get it and it's it's fine it's doing what it that was perfectly acceptable that was not too slow at all so not a problem but i just noticed a little bit extra bracing breaking than i would do uh it's the only reason i noted it but that is perfectly acceptable oh big party all right, so we are coming up to a problem intersection uh, at the end of this road. It's an unprotected left. Um, I would say, you know, back road onto a main road, uh, but it's really not traffic like there. But there are, it is on a hill. So this is, I think, what makes this um, intersection a little more, um, a little more problematic as the, the hill going down and we are coming in here. So in the middle of the hill so essentially you're it's got to watch cars coming from down on the right and up on the left and uh, you'll see that it will put them on the screen 
we'll expand the screen so we can see it through the intersection. But you'll see that it will put it on the screen. Uh, has a beautiful turn, you see it? Not too much braking, it is going through there nice and smooth. It is butter, butter going through there. Actually, look, we're getting home at 47% today. So today, um, it was a little warm at work. And look at this, guys, I'm on the wrong side of the road. Where you down? Where you down? Get on your side of the road. Um, <clears throat> oh, motorcycle. oh looks, Jesus Christ. All right, I took over there. That wasn't an, a, a uh, intervention, I'll say, but that guy was way into my lane leaning-wise. Looked like the car did not have a problem with it, but I moved over a little more. I looked like the car had it. I don't think we were close to him. We are 100% clear on this intersection. Of course, on the day I want to do some testing, so we're going to slide over. We're going to have to roll that back in B-roll and see how that motorcyclist, he was in his lean and he was leaning over the yellow line. The car, I felt it move. I felt it move. It didn't brake. And not that it should have, it should have moved. It should have slowed down maybe a little bit and moved over. I didn't feel a slow, but I felt a move, but I took the wheel and jarred and moved it over for it. I really want to see, we're going to save that uh, dash cam clip as well, just to see how close that was. I'll we'll have to review that. <clears throat> it looked pretty close to me. He was leaning into that turn, which the motorcyclists do. I mean, I mean, you shouldn't be leaning over the yellow line. You should really not do that. But uh, he was leaning and he was definitely close. I wonder, I really want to see how close that was. That was, that was a little freaky. All right, so good thing though, attentive driver sitting here, avoiding any problems. So hopefully no problems will happen, you know, while we're sitting here. And that's the point. The point is you have to be here, you have to be attentive, you have to keep an eye. I mean, I'm not doing anything. <clears throat> I've driven for, out of the uh, 45 minutes we've probably been in the car already, I've driven for a minute, if that. So, you can see here, unmarked uh, road, yellow line. They repaved, no yellow line. No problem, no problem. Tesla don't got no problem. You got a problem? Because Tesla don't got a problem. They got a solution. You may not want to hear it. You may not like it. You may not want to be part of it, but this is the solution. Um, you know, I've had the conversation with plenty of people and they don't understand the metrics in my head. Um, these are the metrics that have kind of been explained to me. And in theory, you have to run through them and back in a napkin mat some of it. But um, I, it, not speaking personally of my car or any systems or, or anything that may be in place, but eventually, and I think it's within this, this year, and everybody keeps laughing at me, but I think it's within this year where I don't have to drive this car at all. And maybe within the next year where it's polished enough where nobody has to drive this car at all. Um, I think it's that close. Um, I, you know, listen, I'm a dumb construction worker. I could be freaking way off. But I see, for the past four years, I've been driving this car. And I've seen it progress to this level. Um, I've seen it come from doing some stuff that was like, holy cow, why would it ever do that? to get to this point and we are four years into it and it is light years I mean this is amazing this is amazing um and you can't argue with that you know even if I am a dumb construction worker my ass has been in this seat watching this car drive itself for four years and I can tell you when things are improving or when they're getting worse. And this is improving. That's a simple thing to see. Um, you know, it's doing hundreds of things it never did before. Hundreds. You can see a little switch back there. We got a little, a little bit closer to the curb than I would like, but we're good. You know, it's doing perfectly fine. Up here we have a little interesting situation, including another problem intersection. Uh, so I think they're a couple years away from autonomy. I think maybe two. Oh, we got a bike rider. You can see it take him into account on the screen. Moves over for him, gives him a little plenty of room. 
um, the uh, once we hit that point where I don't have to do anything or and or I don't have to be here um, there's like a fundamental disruption in what people think at that point now you could own a car but if this technology is in the, a car any car it probably one wouldn't make financial sense for you to own a car you saw the car coming down on the right we are clear that is beautiful that is beautiful waiting for both cars to go that way waiting for the other lady to make her turn beautiful you couldn't ask for a better turn right there stop sign i say that the stop sign this is an excessively long stop thank you uh national highway traffic and safety administration for that excessively long stop nobody was there it was clear we could have went uh you know we could have done a quick boop, boom. um but i say that for you to own a car that so let's say this is i mean just think about this and you gotta clear your mind take the blue pill you know the red pill whichever pill you want to take but you got to think about it fundamentally if i had solar panels on my house and a battery in my garage and i own this car and it can go out and autonomously it puts on a blinker there shouldn't put on a blinker there and it can go out and by itself drive and pick people up and drop them off at their destination throughout the day right think about this now think about it clear your mind what would the cost of that be now listen i know you're going to say cost of install cost of car cost of this cost of that let's wipe all that out tesla owns these let's say company a owns all the vehicles they make them they can make them for thirty-five thousand dollars each they have solar panels on their buildings and they can plug in the cars you know just pulling up and plugging in not that's not a problem that's all by itself you know so let's just say there's a building it's got full solar panels it's got a lot of big batteries a decent amount of big batteries and and they just thirty five hundred that thirty five thousand dollar cars show up every other day and there's more and more of them and they grow whatever the fuel cost is negligible right you're talking kilowatt hours I've been driving for 36 miles 78 miles total today i've used 17 kilowatt hours 17 kilowatt hours <coughs> if i use 10 kilowatt hours that is two dollars and 30 cents if i use 20 that is four dollars and 60 cents four dollars and 60 cents at the highest rate of electricity in close to the country my electricity rate is one of the highest rates in the country in Connecticut thank you state of Connecticut um, four dollars and sixty cents if I had invested in solar and I had solar powering my building where I have all these cars that can autonomously do a taxi ride what is the cost of that electricity you'd say the cost of the install the cost of the batteries this that the other thing but if I own the company that makes the batteries and makes the solar I I mean, effectively, sort of, kind of, I know, my cost is zero. The fuel cost is zero. The maintenance cost would be low because you'll have to have your mechanics there who are already there at all the service centers across the country to maintenance the vehicles. You'll have to have a different set of people that may be your cleaning crew for the vehicles because they're going to go out and autonomously pick people up all day how many would you need in a given area you know that would obviously adjust um now you can see we did all that not i'm not driving this car i cannot stress it enough i'm not driving this car this car is driving itself i have done none of that none of that that was that was an awesome interchange back there it does a like a weird swoop and a tight right and it did all of that i didn't do shit I'm not doing anything. I've not done anything for 37 miles, except for one problem, where a biker leaned into my lane, which, which we could say is not really my fault. Like, if somebody comes into my lane, that's not my, that's not this 
system behaving badly, that's the other person behaving badly. Um, either way, so I digress. Um, I mean, in theory, your cost per mile. You don't have to have a driver here. The computer drives itself. The software is already written. That that labor and, and uh, cost is out, right? So what is your cost to make this car an autonomous taxi? I mean, is it pennies? Pennies? Pennies per mile? I mean, you have really very little cost. So when you think about it, and in theory, what would be the reason to own a car? I mean, I pay $35,000 for this car. And again, it is saving me money because I'm not paying for fuel, but I didn't really have much of a choice. You know, it was either this or a gas guzzler. You know, it's not like there's, there was other options. In 2019, there weren't many. Now you may have a few more, you know, Hyundai, GM, Ford, but those didn't exist back then. Could have went with a Prius, but I don't like the look of them and they do zero to 62 seconds or in 20 minutes. So I, I don't like that. And uh, I mean, I've, I've driven Toyotas, you know, I was never a big fan. They were okay, but there are always problems after a while. Never really had a new car though, but um, why would I own a car? I have insurance, I have maintenance, I have fuel, I have, you know, all sorts of costs. But if I could take transportation and make it virtually free, virtually free, because it will be virtually free, you're talking pennies per car, pennies. You're gonna need someone to clean it once a day. You're gonna need someone to maintenance it once a year. Like, virtually free fuel, virtually free maintenance, virtually free, what would I then charge to give someone a ride for 100 miles? Would it be $10? Would it be $5? I mean, technically, this car cost me $5.60 a day to operate if you get rid of the payments. Get rid of the payments at my electricity rate cost me $5.60. If I had solar, it would be free, right? I mean, except for the cost of installing the solar. But at some point, there's a break for that. So it would be free to fuel this car, which required very little maintenance in the four years, 100,000 miles, that drives itself. So would I pay $6 a day to get to work? Every day, if I could have the car pick me up at 7 a.m. and take me to pick me up at 5 a.m. and take me to work, drop me off at 6, what would you pay? I mean, $5 a day, $40 a week, uh, $2,000 a year, $2,700 $2, a year. That math is way off. I'm doing it. I don't know. But you're literally talking about $2,000 a year versus. $40,000 for 10 years, 20. How long do you keep a car? That's another debate you could have. I ride them till they die. It's what I do. I'll ride this till it dies. That's how I do it. Uh, but what is, what would be the cost? Like, I mean, the numbers in your head, in my head, are staggering. Staggering when you throw solar into the mix. And Tesla can do that. They have these service centers. They can put solar on them. They can put batteries in them pretty efficiently and pretty cheap. Um, and then they could just start sending these cars to the service center because they'll drive themselves. They'll make them. They'll drive themselves to the service center where then you will go on an app and say, Be pick me up at 5 a.m. every morning, Monday through Friday, and drop me off here. And then pick me up on the way home at 3 and drop me off here. And you'll sit in the back. And maybe they'll put some screens and some entertainment back there. You can watch Netflix. Maybe you'll just peruse on your phone. But I'm not driving, dude. I'm not driving. I haven't drove for 40 miles. I'm not driving. I don't know what you, else you need to see to believe that this is happening. And it's costing me nothing. It's costing me nothing to do this. At the end of this car, hopefully, 
as long as it makes it to 300,000 miles another eight years, I will have paid zero dollars total for this experience. Zero dollars. Does that sink in? And that's me, little old construction worker, dumbass me. Imagine what Tesla can do. Imagine what a company of the smartest software engineers, the smartest minds can do with that kind of thought, right? I, I don't know how you don't see it. It's gonna smack you in the face. It is smacking you in the face. It's literally doing it right now. I mean, I'm not driving. Look, cars on the side of the road. Ah, who, who cares? Party, who cares? We're going around. I'm not driving. <laughs> hey, more cars on the side of the road. Ah, we got a lead car. So it's following the lead car. But it'd be interesting if we had a nice interaction with a car coming. That would have been awesome. Would have liked to see that. Not driving, dude. Not driving. Now we've made it 41 miles. 41 miles of not driving. I'm pretty relaxed. I've got to vent to you guys. Let my steam off on you. I apologize. But, you know, that's how it happens. And uh, I got to take over now. I got to drive. I got to drive. Why do I got to drive? Doesn't recognize the speed bump yet. Doesn't recognize that speed bump yet. Nah, shoot. I got to drive. That sucks. Oh, would you look at that? I drove for, I'm going to say less than a minute today. I'm going to say that's about less than a minute. 84 miles, about a minute of total me driving. The car's done the rest. Unbelievable. 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 Believe it.